Well, welcome back to another Coffee in a Chat. And today I just, I want to share with you something that Marvin and I were talking about this morning um, as we were just kind of having, I was having coffee, he was having tea, <laughs> and we we're sitting in front of the wood stove and we were just talking about different things about the Lord and, and how God has blessed us and provided for us. And those of you who've been following our trials and tribulations, I do believe the car is fixed. It was, if, if it, if this is right, if, if the computer, when they plugged it in, told them the truth and it was a piece they had to, that you just unplug it and then you plug the new one in, it was not difficult and it wasn't super expensive and so today we're having to, uh, Marvin's doing some test driving and running it around to make sure that it's going to keep running and that it's not still doing what it was. And so hopefully looks like that maybe was the whole thing. And so we were just amazed. We had, you know, three fairly big things that impacted some things more so than others, our life. And uh, that happened this week, and God has just taken care of everything. And so we were kind of talking about that. And then we also were talking about how much we all need each other. The importance of when we sit down and, and we talk about Scripture together and, and all because you'll see things that I don't see, and I'll see things you don't see. And that person over there, they're going to see something else. And that one over there, they're going to see something else. And and when we all come together and start sharing the different things we see, it kind of helps give us a, a broader view of stuff. Because we were talking about how the Word of God isn't like, well, okay, so when my son was little, he used to watch, love that little movie, when All Dogs Go to Heaven. But it would make him cry. I mean, he was like four. And it would make him cry and cry and cry. At the end. But then he'd be like, play it again, Mommy. Play it again. And so I'm like, Chase, if it makes you so sad, why do you want me to play it again? Well, because maybe this time it'll be different. And he didn't understand yet that that story was always going to go the way it was going. That movie was always going to play out. The same things were going to happen. I mean, it just was what it was. And a lot of stories that we read, a lot of books we read, you know, it's just the facts are there and it just is what it is. But when you read the Word of God, the living Word of God, you can read the same scripture over and over again and see some something new um, every time. It's not that the word is changing, but it is super deep into our soul. And as the Holy Spirit begins to open our eyes more and more to things, we begin to see things that we didn't even know were there. And it just deepens our understanding. It deepens our viewpoint and, and things can be read and and it can be addressing multiple issues. And it's just, I mean, it's one of the things that I just love about the Bible is that it's not, you know, a bunch of books that I'm just going to read them from one end to the other. And, you know, now I know the story and that's how it goes. Oh, it's so much more than that. And so we were talking about that. And as we were talking about it, I remembered back to a time that was a great example for me. We were... Um, at a, a Bible study I, when I was married to my first husband. I always have to clarify that for, my, for Marvin. <laughs> so he knows, was this him or the other guy? <laughs> so I was married to my first husband and we were um, at a Bible study. And so there was this gentleman there, this, this older gentleman that usually dominated everything. And I, I had struggles with him. Um, at times because he would be so dominant and he would take over and, you know, and, and when people were sharing things, you know, he might correct them. <laughs> I, I don't know. just kind of, you, you sometimes felt like you, you know, your individuality was going to be threatened. And uh, he just was just so dominant that it, it was hard for me. Well, this particular night we were reading Psalm 37, 4. That's just this one verse. And it says, and again, this new international version, it says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Or um, I think King James is delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And I think New American Standard pretty much says it that way. 
but most people know it, it as delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Okay, so we were discussing that that night. And this guy, this older gentleman, he was very quiet. He didn't say anything, which was unusual, very unusual. And so we kind of forgot he was there and we're just going on and on with our discussion. Now, I mean, we all had a little bit different take on it and stuff, but but basically, you know, we were talking about what it was to delight ourselves in the Lord, because if we could do that, then he was going to give us the desires of our heart in that he'll give us all the things we want, you know, and, and like, who doesn't want that, you know, and people would talk about, you know, the different desires that they had that they wanted God to fulfill. And, and honestly, when, when I look back and the way the night played out, we were all pretty shallow in that. It was all about how can we get God to do what we want? what we want him to do for us. That's not good. <laughs> That's really putting things backwards. And after we'd been talking for a while, then this older gentleman spoke up. And he said, I guess I just, you know, what you guys are saying, I've always seen it that way too, but the Lord kind of just gave me a different take tonight. So we're like, okay. And he goes, you know, I see it that what I'm seeing when we read this tonight is that if I'll delight myself in the Lord, then he will give me his desires, that he will give me the desires that go into my heart and they'll be his desires, that he will pour his desires into me. You know, and it's like, as he began to try to explain it, it's like, oh, I get that. So rather than it being my fleshly desires, it now is his godly desires that he has for me. And I will begin to desire the things he wants me to desire, the things he wants to give me, that he will literally give me those, put those desires in me, and then he will bring them to pass. And it just, I've never looked at that verse um, in the old way like I used to. But it's like that, you know, that makes more sense, right? That I need to be heavenly minded, godly minded. I need to have the mind of Christ. So shouldn't I have the desires that God has for me? And so Marvin and I were talking about that, you know, and in the importance, you know, I mean, I, cause I told him, I go, that guy used to just bug me like, oh my word, he's going to take over. But that night, I think because he'd been quiet for so long and we'd forgot he was there that when he did spoke or did spoke, <laughs> my mom, right now is going, grammar, grammar. <laughs> when he did speak, we were more willing to listen. And we heard, or at least I know I heard something that had a huge impact on me and really changed a lot of things in my heart to no longer be going after the things that I desire those fleshly things, but to pursue him that he would put his desires in me. And as Marvin and I were speaking about that, we reminisced once more about how the Lord brought us together, how we never would have found each other or been able to put together this relationship that we have but it was God's desire for us. And we both had different little things that, that we thought we wanted in a spouse that were not important. You know, there were like top, the top three things, those, those were deal breakers. Those were important, but the other stuff, you know, not so important. And, and I'll, I'll say this, you know, I mean, cause one of these days, I do believe Marvin and I will be able to share our story together. But one little part of our story that I, I'm going to share with you right now is I thought that, you know, that, you know, my husband should at least be taller than I was, you know, as taller, taller. I, I just was like, I don't know that, you know, that I would want my husband to be some short little guy. I don't, I'm not in short guys and I'm not super tall myself. At my tallest that I ever was, was 5'7". I'm not that tall anymore. I've, I've been shrinking. I'm shrinking this way, not this way. And I wish I could shrink this way and not that, but whatever. <laughs> well, I am shrinking a little bit this way, but not enough. Okay, 
So, bird dogging. Yes, Marvin, I hear you. But um, when I, I was, you know, looking at stuff, you know, I thought, you know, that's important to me. Well, I met Marvin actually over the phone. We talked for days, weeks, months on the phone before we ever met in person. By the time we met in person, I'm telling the Lord, I don't care if he walks in here and he's only two foot tall. I love this man. And yes, I will marry him because God had already told me, this is the one I want you to marry him. And yeah, I'll marry him even if he's only two foot tall. And my point is that as God began to work in my heart, those fleshly things that I thought were important didn't even matter anymore. Now, he's not two foot tall. <laughs> he is taller than I am by a little bit, but... But it doesn't matter because no longer was I holding on to my desires, but I'd actually allowed the Lord to put his desires in me that would line up with the man that he was bringing to be my husband. Figure out what it is to delight yourself in the Lord so that he will allow you to receive his desires for your life because and that was the thing that Marvin and I said this morning we could never outdo God's desires his desires for us are so much better so much greater so much more amazing more miraculous bigger than anything we desired in you know on our own and so, and he had, you know, there was, you know, we've got a joke between us because there was something that he thought was important about his wife that doesn't fit me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but we'll save that one for when he joins me and we can share this together. But you guys, I know you have desires. I know there are things that you want. And there are things that you are trusting God for. But trust him enough to put his desires for you in, his, in your heart. Because I guarantee, I promise you, what he desires to give you is so much more than what you're willing to settle for. <laughs> okay, that's it for today. That's, that's what I wanted to share. It blessed me so much to be sitting there with Marvin. And see, even that, that we, that we sat there together probably two hours this morning, just drinking tea and coffee in front of the fire, talking about the goodness of God and how good he's been to us, just worshiping and praising the Lord in the testimony that we could share. Wow, that... That is so much more important to me than whether or not he's more than two feet tall. <laughs> so much more important. So there's your little nugget today. I love you guys. Um, you know the deal. If you haven't subscribed and these videos are ministering to you, then go ahead and subscribe so you can hit the notification bell so that you will know every day when the next video comes up because I'm here every day or sometimes on another location in the house but usually here and uh hit the like button if you like it leave me a comment you can email me if you want to talk privately it my email is in the description of this video and yeah share it with a friend share the video with a friend that you think it might make a difference in their life because my goal is not to be the biggest YouTube channel ever. My goal is to share Jesus Christ with as many people as I possibly can for the, the days that are left of my life, however many days the Lord still has for me, how many weeks, months, years, whatever life he still has for me, I want it to count for him. And there's nothing I can do more to count for him than to share the love of Jesus with as many people as are willing to to listen so hey that's why i'm here all right i love you guys just want to say an extra hi to peace 
and tell her, um, you know, peace, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Um, D, I'm, I'm praying for you. Uh, Paul, all the different ones that, um, Jenny, so many of you, I, I couldn't even, I can't even keep up with it all anymore. But I will say this, every time somebody leaves me a, a comment, I've just gone ahead and been putting you guys in my prayer journal for 40 days. Um, just am because I just I, I love to pray for people and that's the other thing I would love to pray for you so you know however however God moves on your heart whatever it is you want to do and, and see and I'm not looking at the camera at the right place again because I gotta get a sticker on somebody mail me a little sticker no I'm just kidding I've got one somewhere I know I just need a little dot that's a bright color so I'll always look at that dot because I lose the camera because the whole surrounding of the of the uh, picture is all black and my eyesight is not what it used to be and I can't always figure out where it is but I think that it's right there anyway you guys have an awesome day and I'll talk to you tomorrow or um, you know ramble on or whatever it is I do because doggone it that's who I am it's how God made me so it's part of loving me all right talk to you later